Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. It's episode 668. We got Dino and Milo, aka Milo. He was saying Milo, Milo. People are just gonna he, people are gonna Tomato, call him Tomato. Milo. <laughs> exactly. They're gonna they're call gonna him read Milo. It and they're gonna be American and they're gonna call him Milo. Yes, absolutely. But it's Milo and he's great, and we got him here today. Uh, you saw the announcement online, everybody's tweeting us, everybody's blowing up the socials. I said, listen. Get it right out. Get the episode right out. We got Fear Factory on Milwaukee Metal Fest with the new singer, Milo. Oh, snap. It's going to be good. Get your meet and greets at martyrstore.net, M-A-R-T-Y-R-S-T-O-R-E.net. There's only 20 for the Fear Factory meet and greets, so get them before they are gone. And they will be playing Saturday, May 27th with Anthrax, Suicidal Tendencies, Obituary, Terror, Immolation, the list goes on and on and on. Black Dahlia murder, shadows fall. I mean, you're getting like 15 headliners. Shadows fucking... fall. That's wild, dude. Yes, back together, dude. Insane. Killing it. Killing it. Go to martyrstore.net for all the meet and greets. Just give us a, another week or two to get all the other meet and greet packages up. But uh, Ripper's up, Crowbar's up, Dying Fetus is up, and uh, I think Fear Factory should be up by the time you guys are seeing this. If you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, hit the bell, please. That that works. And thank you, everybody who left a comment, right? Because the comments kicked ass on DSI and Trevor. Thumbs up, and comments, any any interaction you got for us, we'll take it. We enjoy it. We appreciate you. We we seriously appreciate it, especially now that we're getting back in the algorithmic gods. And listen, everybody keep breaking Sid's balls about um getting <laughs> getting big, trying to big time somebody so funny dude, dude. And, and we will get ross back that reminds me as soon as i'm done recording sure. with you i'm gonna hit up ross and we'll do a full episode with ross career spanning the guy's a fucking legend oh yeah absolutely he's great now let me just uh real quick thank manscaped our sponsor that we know and love get rid of the hippie dick because spring is going to be here any minute now right around the corner don't look like a groundhog down there you don't want to take your pants off and be like oh my god another couple years of whatever winter right what what is the thing with the groundhog what is oh that? yeah it's like another six weeks or whatever yeah you can't have a stank shank no trim your hog trim the groundhog <laughs> make it look good down there manscape.com promo code jost at 20 off plus free shipping the link is always in the show notes also thank you to century media records they are killing it right now with that new unearthed single go check out the uh the episode we did with trevor aka fipsy and i'm pleased to announce if you're actually listening to this i'm pleased to announce like if you don't skip over this on earth is going to play milwaukee oh, metal Festival. Snap. yes on the sunday I'm for Dude. sure coming on Sunday. Lamb of God, Machine <laughs> Head, The Halo Effect, After the Burial, Sanguasugabog, On Earth. Century Media is fucking killing the game right now. Go to centurymedia.store after the podcast, pick up Homicidal Ecstasy, and they will give us the pre order link and the pre order info for On Earth any day now. But I'm thinking it's going to be, it's going to drop in March, right? Or, or April? What do you think? What's the bet? What's the over under? For, uh, for on earth street day oh i bl i think it's out right no it's just the single we need the we need the pre-orders everybody wants the pre-orders now that they heard the single so we just need that date what do you what, what's the what's the bet i'm gonna say march 13th um i'm kind of cheating right now but the date has not <laughs> been announced so yeah let's say uh i hope it's in march yeah, I we'll, would I would rather March than April for sure. I want I want New Unearth right now. Yeah, let's we're gonna pump it up for him. And big thanks to Century Media. Also, check out um uh uh Milwaukee Metal Festival dot com. Get your tickets, or you could just go to the rave.com slash metal fest. The rave.com slash metal fest. You'll see the uh day splits are on there, and we added like another VIP over there too, like a big baller VIP. I, I don't know how much it is, but it's it's for those. It's, you know how like you go to the games and there's those people like down on the fucking court, like the big ballers, just like glad handing people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those types of packages. You'll see the rate, but otherwise you'll see the single day tickets, two day tickets, and there's a payment plan. Just make sure you make your fucking payment. Don't don't fuck up. Make your payment before March first if you're on a payment plan from Milwaukee Metal Fest. So that's it, everybody. Big thanks to Century Media. Big thanks to Manscaped. Oh, one last thing, IndieMerchStore.com, promo code MMF23. Gotta support IndieMerchStore.com. They've been supporting the podcast forever, 
and they got all the fucking restocks. They got all the pre-orders you need. You could try Just a 10 too, but IndieMerchStore.com, MMF23 should work. If not, Just a 10. We'll put the sh- we'll put the fucking codes in the in the show notes. Yeah, you just click on it. Literally just but, click on the link. Follow the instructions. But, it'll be there. It's so easy. And you know what else is, is easy? Talking to my man, Milo, from Fear Factory, the new vocalist who's going to be introduced today on this episode uh, with Dino. And uh, we appreciate the love. All right, everybody. Enjoy the show. My friend, the lead singer of Hate Breed, the infamous and notorious Jamie Jasta is in the building. That's what's up. Jamie Jasta from the metal band Hate Breed. That guy's famous. Coffee, death metal, and push-ups. That's Jamie Jasta. Remember Jamie Jasta? You know him. He's podcast, but he's also he's a metal man. I would say you can eat that. That shit is hard. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome to the show. We have a very special episode today. Our good friend Dino Cazares is here. Fear Factory is hitting the road with Static X, Mushroom Head, Dope, and then Twist is on some shows, too. Yeah, Twist is on some of the shows, um, and I believe Society One, which is um, one of the uh, Zane brothers, is on there. Right on, and I see shows are getting upgraded. Everybody's talking. People are really excited and really curious to see who's going to be singing for Fear Factory. We're going to have a surprise for everybody in, in just a little bit. But uh, how, how do yeah. you feel? Like, what's what's? The, are you nervous? Are you are you are you stoked? What's the what's the feeling of anticipation like? Uh, definitely not nervous, but I'm very very excited because uh, you know the rehearsals have been kicking ass. We've been uh, rehearsing every day for the past. Uh, couple of weeks and uh we're getting prepared for this tour it's going to be good half the shows are sold out which is really good you know it's been a year since we postponed this tour because it was supposed to happen a year ago but you know because of all the obviously you know covid restrictions and all that stuff we decided to post postpone it and so now it's officially really happening um i had to make a decision on who i was going to use as a vocalist because I had auditioned a shit ton of people. I mean, at least, at least 300 different video submissions of people all around the world. You name it. From great singers to guys pulling jokes and farting in microphones and saying, I'll be your singer. You know, just a lot of funny things. I don't know. Maybe someday I'll, I'll combine them all together and release it, uh, on YouTube or something like that. But some pretty funny videos where some guys singing on a, out of a boom box. It looked like some kind of like a little karaoke type machine in his kitchen. And you see his cat walking on the boom box. It was hilarious. <laughs> a lot of good videos. Right? Um, a lot of females stepped up. A lot of, a lot of females stepped up. And, uh, um, you know, there was definitely some females in the top five that I, you know, I almost sh- chose, but, you know, it did take a long process for me to find somebody. Um, I was, you know, touring with Soulfly in between, you know, uh, around 20, late 2021 to, 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 to up till recently. And um, so in that process, I was looking for singers and I was, you know, very meticulous because I know how important it is for, you know, Fear Factory fans, you know, that I picked the right guy. And I believe and I know that I got the right dude. So I'm oh. very happy about that. I- I had made the mistake of like joking around with someone and I forgot to tell them I was joking. Like, and a couple days later they were like, cause I told them I auditioned, but I didn't, I didn't make the cut. And, uh, (laughs) and then I also said Howard did too. And and Howard didn't get the, and the dude hit me up and I thought he knew I was like, just fucking with him, whatever, but he hit me up a couple days later and he was like, yo, that's fucked up, man. Like, but, the, but that means like whoever they got it must be like really sick or whatever. And I was like, no, 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 I, I'm just joking. Like, I I, I don't well, think he was lo- hey. looking for someone established. I think he wants to start fresh. Like if you did you think about going with someone established as opposed to starting fresh? Of course. Of course. I mean, I, I would have loved to have somebody like you. But come on, dude, where you would not <laughs> have any time. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I don't think I can pull it off. Just doing the four songs is char- is challenging enough. Like when we do the Justin Friends song uh, uh, set yeah. list with, with all those Fear Factory songs. And they're great songs and fun to play, which has yeah. been, you know, which has made me think, like, how did you choose the set list for this? And 
what is that process like? Hold on. Well, let's go back a, 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 a second here. Because okay. I definitely did consider guys that were in other bands, but I, I kind of didn't, I didn't want to have to do a, you know, cause I think there would be a lot of scheduling conflicts, right? If a guy's in another band, and then we wouldn't be able to tour as much. What if somebody wanted us to do something like the Milwaukee Metal Fest? And I wouldn't be able to do it because, you know, the, the singer has another gig somewhere else. You know what I mean? So I wanted a guy who was fresh off the boat, new school guy. I like discovering new talent. There's a lot of talented people out there. There's a lot of talented, and they just never get the shot. And so I wanted to give, you know, a kind of a, an, an unknown guy you know a, a shot or i know a person a shot you know um and picking the set list well on the static x tour we only get 45 minutes so that's a hard set list to pick for only 45 minutes um but you no know one you, better be in there if no one's not in the set I no mean, no one is not in the set no one ever has been on except you <laughs> dude Seriously. yeah can people put it wanna, in can you still learn it there's still time of course, we can still learn at the time. This this guy that I got when I first auditioned him, I auditioned him with eighteen songs. He kept going and going and going and going. I go, what about this track? What about this track? And I would play the instrumental while he was singing, singing in front of me, uh, raw, on the microphone in the in the rehearsal room. I was cranking the instrumentals really loud. And he was singing like he was on stage, and I was like, wow. And I played. I go, what about this song? What about this song? And he nailed every 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 song he nailed. So I was like, "Wow, this kid knows it all." So now, now, do you live together beforehand so you can like smell each other's yes. farts and like know if yes. you like annoy each other and whatnot? <laughs> of course, of course. And like, yeah. do you cook or do you go out to eat? Like, yes. what is, what is the vetting process? He he. Well, definitely go out to eat. Yeah, he. Uh, you know, I have a spare room, so he stays in the spare room. Um, he's cooked. He cooked last night. I'm not gonna tell you what he cooked. But he cooked last night. It was great. So yeah, we definitely hang with each other. You have to. You have to get get to know each other really well before I made that final decision. You know what I mean? All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna meet this person in just a minute. But I want to uh, and thank you so much for coming on the show. And and of course, we, we obviously won't put this out until you're until you give us yeah. the go ahead. Um, you got the exclusive. You're you're the greatest, and I'm I'm so excited. I'm so happy for the tour because I know how. I know how many people have been waiting for this tour. Um, but I also got to thank you for doing Milwaukee metal fest because we want to give you more songs or, or have you come back and do different songs. Cause since you'll already be there with static X, so I was like, Oh, we got to have them come back and give oh, them we'll, a we'll set. Definitely, we'll definitely make a heavier set list and we'll throw no one in there for you. Thank you so we'll, much. And, we'll and, and you have, we'll, we'll give you a huge shout out for that song. Because, <laughs> look, Jamie's been busting my balls. If I don't play the song live, and so here, you know, so well, we'll be dedicated to you. Now, but should we be worried about Mike, your drummer, because he's he's gonna, I, be he's, fired. Gonna, he's gonna be doing triple duty? I think people have seen it by now, but uh, malignancy, Raven, and Fear Factory on the same yep. day, or is he gonna stay the next day and do? I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. Well, I don't. I don't know what the schedule is. You know what I mean? I hope he doesn't do it all the same day. <laughs> Poor guy. You know, but I'm sure yeah. he can. I'm sure he can do it. Well, we we have to get him on the show, and we have to. I think if he does all three, and if he does the triple duty, we got to make him his own like calves of steel. Uh, yeah, we're, shirt. We're, we're gonna make him a little plaque, like a little, a little, uh, like you know, Olympic necklace, you know, because he he's it, that's definitely a marathon. You know what I mean? Doing all three bands, you know, especially if he does it in one day, or even just the whole weekend. That's still a lot. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a lot of a lot of songs to remember, a lot of parts to remember, especially the drummer. You know what I mean? It's a lot of shit to remember. So I think he deserves some sort of medal or a plaque for that day. Or or like we got to make honorary merch, I think, because people will their their legs are going to be sore from going up and down to all the different stages and steps, <laughs> but they're not going to be as sore as Mike. Mike's legs yeah. after three after the Fear Factory Malignancy and Raven set. We we were doing a photo shoot the other day and he was like, I need to wear my hat in the photo. I'm like, all right. And I go, I think you need to make your signature hats. We're gonna call them Heller hats. <laughs> Heller hats. <laughs> what hat? What hat did he wear in the photo shoot? He just wore a, a plain black one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, are you ready to introduce us to the new Fear Factory singer? How do you feel? 
I'm I'm very excited. Uh, I feel very I feel very good. I feel very excited. And I, I know it's going to kick ass, and uh, we we can't. You know, this is going to be our debut in a long time. We haven't played. Fear Factor hasn't played since 2016. Wow. So last time we played a live show. Obviously, there's been a lot of drama, a lot of uh, you know court cases, and just a lot of stuff like that. But and you know COVID and you know add all that together, so it's been like roughly six years. So we are excited to get out there. I'm excited to introduce this new guy to you guys, and uh, let's do it. You ready? All right. Yeah, we're ready. Without further ado, this guy's name is Milo Silvestro, and he's from Italy. He's from Rome, Italy. So here he is, Milo. He's coming to the show, buddy. He's coming. Hold on, he's coming. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move, and he's gonna sit here. All right. Okay. And don't, don't go too hard on him. Uh, <laughs> yo, what's the deal? You farting, eating burritos in front of you, right? <laughs> putting tagine in the beer. I introduced him to that, though. By the way, here we go. Hi, Jerry. How's nice it going? To meet you. Good. Good. Nice Thanks, to meet you, man. Thanks for agreeing to do this, man. We're excited, and congratulations on the gig. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. You know, anytime, a- anytime. We're looking forward to seeing you guys on the tour and really, really psyched to have you on uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest as well. Yeah. So Dino told me that you you come from a very musical family. You're yeah. from Roma, Roma, Italy. You're 35, multi-instrumentalist. You play drums, guitar, bass, keyboards, vocals, and you produce music. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I got involved in a bunch of things musically, right? <laughs> uh, well, you know, it all started, of course, you know, my both my parents are professional musicians. Like, my mom is a vocalist and a vocal teacher, mostly, like, gospel, blues rock, jazz, you know, that kind of stuff. And my dad is a professional blues guitar player, and he was also a songwriter for a, for a big festival called San Remo in Italy. He produced, like, a couple of singers. And now it's mostly into like blues, bossa nova. He also plays like David Cross, you know, James Taylor, finger picking style. So uh, I got my passion for music from them, of course, you know. And did, uh, did they listen to any rock or, or metal? Uh, well, not metal. You know, they, you know, at first they were like, oh, what's this noise? You know, we can't understand that. You know, it gives me anxiety and shit like that. So, uh, but you know, the heaviest they would go is like Led Zeppelin, you know. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> but you what, know, at what age? At what age did you discover it? Did you discover metal? Uh, I think it was uh, between 15, 16 years old. Uh, started off, you know, of course, the classic with Metallica, you know, Kill 'Em All, you know, still one of my favorite album. And uh, then from there it progressed, you know, pretty much. Uh, I was pretty much into, you know, of course, during the late 90s, I was a teenager, so I was into, like, Pantera, and then Korn, and then Fear Factory, and, you know, Static X, you know, and so on and so on. So, uh, And do you remember of, your uh, your first Fear Factory show? And were you in the front row, like, yes. waving to Dino? Yes. <laughs> you know, definitely in the front row, I was, okay, it was 2010. I, you know, unfortunately, I discovered Fear Factory a little bit late, because it was like 2006, 2007, and uh, but it got so deep into them, you know, I was so passionate about it because they had all though, you know, because before Fear Factory, I've listened to a bunch of bands that had, you know, all those elements like clean vocals, harsh vocals, the the uh, double bass locked with the guitar, you know, and then I got to Fear Factory and I was like, okay, now I know where all these things come from, you know? And uh, they were oh, like a right. combination of everything that I liked about, you know, 90s metal. You know, they had the groove, they had the fast parts, they had the electronics, they had a lot of influences, you know? And so uh, the first time was like 2010 in Bologna, North Italy, was the mechanized tour. Um, yeah, front row, definitely. I was like, ah. And yeah, it was really, you know, I think from there really started to get even deeper into, uh, you know, Fear Factory vocals, you know, it started to being really influenced even more, you know. Were, were so, you already in a band at that point and yeah. playing locally? Yeah, I've been in a band called Dead Channel since uh, 
2008, 2009. And uh, it was kind of a Nine Inch Nail band, you know, like I did pretty much everything, like guitar, bass, drums in the studio. And then I had a band to play the, you know, the songs live. And we did a bunch of, you know, really home produced albums. <laughs> and, uh, and the last latest album was like, uh, you know, a combination of different songs from those albums and re-recorded in, you know, with much better production. And uh, yeah, of course. And uh, a lot of vocals were, you know, a lot of arrangements too were influenced by Fear Factory, you know, like the, the double kick parts, you know, the electronics, the, the vocals, scream, melodic. So, uh, you know, definitely influenced by that. So when did you hear that they were auditioning or did you try to contact Dino before it was public? Like what, and, and, and what was your inspiration? You just thought, you know, I could do this or were you covering fear factory like on your YouTube page or, or at your live shows with your band? Like what, what gave you the confidence and w what was the point when you said, all right, I'm going to reach out. Okay, so this is the funny story. I, I didn't know, you know, when I did the covers on YouTube, I didn't know that there was an addition going on, you know. So uh, the first cover I ever did was 2014, just for having fun, you know. I've never been, like, a huge YouTuber. I had never had, like, the, the dedication, you know, post videos. You know, it was, like, just one and, and whatever. And it was, like, a full band cover, you know, like, playing guitars, bass, drums, and singing. And, uh, you know, of course, I didn't mention it, but drums are like my primarily instrument. So I've been playing drums since I was 12. And I play a little bit of guitar, you know, just rhythmic stuff. And uh, so I did this cover of Fear Campaign. You know, back then I was really uh, enthusiastic about the Mechanized album. And uh, I decided to do that Fear Campaign cover just with the GoPro in my studio. I also run a studio. And, um, you know, 2014, just to have fun. Then years later, uh, January 2020, shortly uh, before the pandemic, I decided to do one more cover. So uh, it was like Soul of a New Machine medley, you know, some songs are from that album, just pieces of songs, just vocals, you know, in the studio just to have fun. Again, you know, no expectation at all, you know, just to get some people to, to see it. And that was it. And I uh, posted on a New Breed Facebook page. Again, just to, to have some people to see it, you know, and, and have the feedback. And Dino wasn't that page. I didn't know about that, you know. And he commented it. He was the first commenting. It was like, that's fucking amazing. And it was like, whoa, you know, I'm really humbled that Mr. Dino replied, you know, thank you, man. Thank you, maestro, you know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and uh, shortly after the, the lockdown kicked in, you know, in Europe, it kicked in like February, right? So uh, Italy was really, really bad we were all locked down in our houses and you know since we had nothing to do I, I decided to do one more cover you know so it was like resurrection and timelessness both together and again I posted it in a new new breed Facebook page and Dino commented again you did an amazing job you know I was like oh again wow this is amazing the next day I wake up seven in the morning you know I was all numbed and stuff you know and I you know grabbed my phone and I see Dino, he messaged me. He was like, oh, I really like your stuff. You know, can I can ask you a bunch of questions, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, this can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Am I fucking dreaming? No. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was very shocking, you know, in a good way. It was like, fuck, I can't believe it, you know. And, you know, from there, it, it just snowballed. But the thing is, at the time... Uh, there wasn't a, an addition yet because they were still going through the legal suit and stuff like that. So uh, I think the Dino just wanted at first to, to do like a solo project, you know, because uh, Fear Factory couldn't, they couldn't do live, they couldn't do anything because of the legal suit. So uh, uh, he, you know, later on, he told me that he was additioning people like me to do the solo project since he couldn't do anything with Fear Factory. But then I think uh, something around June 2020, June, July, he, he could, uh, you know, he could uh, get over the, the legal suit and get uh, the, the name Fear Factory back and stuff. So he was back in full control and he was like, okay, so I'm going to do it with Fear Factory. Then um, 
you know, the singer Berg quit in uh, uh, September 2020. And uh, a few days later, uh, after he announced the departure, Dino texted me, was like, oh, okay, so I'm now gonna have audition for Fear Factory vocalist. Do you still wanna try? And I was like, what? <laughs> I never, you know, okay, never, never, ever imagined that I could, you know, run for the spot of the vocalist of Fear Factory, you know? When he told me so, it was like, that, that can be true. I mean, that just can be true. So it was like even more shocking. So, uh, but in the meantime, he had, uh, he had me doing a bunch of covers, you know, video covers, just as, um, um, you know, uh, the virtual audition since we couldn't meet each other due to the travel ban. So um, he kept me doing you know, a few of them, uh, you know, a few Divine Heresy songs, a few Fear Factory songs. He sent me instrumentals and I was videotaping me in my studio and recording at the same time. And um, we have been doing this since 2021. Then November 2021, when the travel ban was lifted, I could finally come here in LA to do the audition. And he was like, okay, no, you're good, let's do it. And wow. uh, yeah, yeah, it was really- You had to go get the visas. You had yeah, to get your passport renewed. Like, did did you have an active passport? Like, were you traveling with your other band? Uh no, like because prior, prior to the, I had a passport because I've been in Brazil like ten years ago. But you know, I had to renew it. I had we had to ask for a visa. You know, I had to go in a, you know in a, in a historical center of Rome. You know, that's where we have all the embassy and stuff like that to you know to apply. It's, it's been like a long bureaucratic trip you know but we made it eventually so uh so yeah listen up everybody today's episode is brought to you by century media records you know them you love them and they have many bands playing milwaukee metal fest they support us so we want to support them here on the justice show they got the new unearth the wretched the ruinous single out now available on all your uh streaming providers also check out sanguasugabog homicidal ecstasy you can go get the Coke Bottle Clear Limited Edition Vinyl at CenturyMedia.store. Both of these bands are killing it. So many so many bands on the Century Media roster is killing it right now. But uh, Sanguasugabog and Unearth will both be playing at Milwaukee Metal Fest on uh, the same day, Sunday, May 28th. And make sure you go and check out their sets. Sanguasugabog will also be on the Chaos and Carnage Tour starting April 7th in Fort Worth, Texas with Dying Fetus and label mates Suicide Silence. Big shout out to the boys from Suicide Silence. And uh, if you're listening to this before, let's see, what day is today? February. If you're, Yeah, you might be hearing this before February 26th. Go see Sanguasugabog with label mates Vomit Forth at Ace of Cups in Ohio, uh, February 26th. And once again, the link is centurymedia.store. We will have the Unearth pre-order info very soon, but right now go get that uh, Sanguasugabog homicidal ecstasy that shit is hard now back to the show what type of advice has dino given you or actually what type of advice has anybody given you like was is dino is he the most sort of known famous musician you've known or are you friendly with people you know who have success in italy um who said you know make sure you do this or like what was the best advice that you've gotten so far? Uh, I had many actually, you know, I, like I always tell him, you know, I'm here to learn from you and, you know, from the guys, because, you know, this is my very first time actually touring, you know, because I never actually toured, you know, just did like, well, I've been playing for 20 years, you know, I, I, this is what I do for a living. I'm with music, both live musician and studio engineer, composer, whatever, but, you know, never actually toured like from one country to another, you know, just did like local gigs stuff like that maybe a couple of gigs in Italy, but you know so i'm here to learn and my you know one of the best advice hmm, yeah there, well there are many I, I just have to think about that for a moment like yeah like what's one that resonated with you from someone who's had success you know that you've worked with in the studio or whatever because when i wanted to send my demo tape my tryout tape in for sepultura um, I had heard, you know, there's other guys from like hardcore and metal bands, you know, trying out. And then I heard Chuck Billy from Testament was trying out. Um, but somebody uh, just 
local close to me said, do your own thing, man. Like just, you know, go off and, and do your own thing. And I, but I really wanted, I really thought, you know, I should send it in just to see what they say. But I was also, I think kind of afraid of failing and afraid of, um, uh, just rejection in general. Right. And so, you know, you, it, it seems like you must've had someone near you or you just had it within you to not have that fear of, of rejection or fear of failure, which is a really great thing to have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you mean fear of rejection on live or in general, just in life. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was a, a, a vocal teacher or a music teacher or, or maybe it was Dino like, no, dude, you got this, you know, because I mean, he's been telling me the whole time, like, this guy's great. It's going to be sick. And I obviously, uh, you know, trust him and, and believe him because, you know, it's it's his vision at the end of the day. And as a diehard Fear Factory fan, um, you know, I just want the best. I want the music to go on and I want the legacy to live on and I want him to have a great future with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, the, the, uh, like you said, the fear of failure is always, you know, can be always there, you know, but the, the good thing is that I, you know, I've been doing the, the pro musician for years. So fortunately, you know, stage is, is not, is not always easy, you know, to deal with, but, you know, I, I got a little bit of background. Of course, this is like, you know, stepping into a whole new game. So it's going to be like a massive crowd. It's going to be like, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I will be known by a lot of people. So uh, there, there's going to be, of course, some pressure, but I know I'm, I, I'll be able to deal with it. So, uh, of course, you know, the guys got my back, you know. Uh, well, I, so. I have a little advice for you. The yep. internet is largely fake. Like, yeah. if you, like it's really, and, it, and it's, it blows my mind because I'll see stuff and I'll go, oh my God, you know, they hate this person or this person did something or whatever. And then I'll see the band and I'll see the person and it's like, people are going crazy. The merch line is down the street, the arena sold out. And I go, what the fuck? If you believed the internet, you would think that like, there'd be nobody there or whatever. So you got to take a lot of it. Uh, what's the saying? Uh, with, with a grain of salt, meaning, you know, you gotta be, uh, you, you gotta be apprehensive of believing, um, some of the stuff and you gotta have thick skin because forever, I feel like for every vocal, <laughs> one person there's like 200 that are too busy doing positive things in their life um you know who will support you and they don't you know they might not go online and support you online but they'll go to the show they'll buy the shirt they'll check out you know your youtube or whatever yeah, this actually this actually rang a bell because that's exactly one of those advices that Dino gave me. You know, it, it, so you just made me remember about it. You know, it was it was you know he told me exact the exact same. It was like you know don't take it personal. You know, people are gonna attack you, but you know, you possibly don't read the comments. Or if you do, like grow, you know, learn how to grow some thick skin. You know, just how, like you said. You know, so uh, also never respond. Never, never engage because when you argue with with an idiot, they will beat you by experience because they have more experience. And and also, there's this new thing with just negative, toxic people, especially toxic people online, where they will attack you, and then if you defend yourself, they are the victim, and yeah. and other people will side with them because they also are stuck in the victim mentality and the victim existence. So you want to make sure you do not engage. You want to make sure you don't go to their level because then they suck you in and they get your attention when you could be focusing on just having a great show or, uh, or, you know, going to uh, get Dino some ice for the bus because he needs ice. You got to have ice on the bus. You got to have <laughs> Cold Coca Cola, cold ice, a little tagine, some cervezas. What? Do you, how do you say beer in, in uh, Italian? Italian say birra. 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 Oh, birra. You got to roll the R's. Yeah, two R's. It's birra. 
how how close is the is Italian to to Spanish? Uh kind of close. Yeah, uh, we we can. You know, I've been in Spain. You know, I could understand pretty much. You know, not all of it. You know, because they they have dialects just like us. You know, which, which are really different. It's almost like almost like languages. But you know, you could you could get most of the part. You know, I, I can't speak Spanish myself, but you know. If, if we talk slowly, you know, both, you know, the Italian guy, the Spanish guy, if they both talk slowly, they kind of understand, you know, but, you know, not the same, of course, but, you know. So you're going you're to have to brush up because let me tell you, Dino in Mexico is like, he's like the fucking governor. He's like the president of, <laughs> he's like the Mexican metal president. And then you go to South America and it's going to be bonkers. And you're going to have to, you're going to have to learn like, you know, go fucking crazy, jump up and down, fucking uh, yeah. all the all the banter. Like, has he given you advice on on some of the stage banter? Ah, uh, yeah, of course, of course. You know, we've been working on that. You know, like on oh, this part, you should go like this. This part, you should go like you know, hype the crowd and go like, you know, repeat after me. Da, 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 you know, so yeah, we've been working. I don't on want that. to live that way. And don't <laughs> remember, it's four times. Don't fucking. He's gonna want to do it eight. The second I time around, he's gonna want to do it eight. <laughs> now, what about, I know. what about uh the the crowds that you've played in front of? Like, what's the biggest crowd you've played in front of? Uh, you know, I've been playing uh in front of you know not not that crowd, not that large. You know, I I play, I did play in front of like thousands of people. Like talking more than ten thousand people, but it was like three or four times in my life. You know. It was, wasn't uh, you know that often you know i did some big theaters in rome you know like three four hundred people stuff like that but you know not that i'm used to play in front of huge crowds every day for for a month and, and a half and stuff like that you know so well, try to try to find the person who's enjoying themselves and focus on them like it don't if you if you see the impress me bro and he's like <laughs> all right, Milo. And he's got his arms crossed. He's like, all right, Milo, you're the new guy. Impress me, bro. The, don't look at the impress me, bro. Yeah. You got to look at the kid who's losing his mind, giving you the horns, you know, and you got to vibe off that energy. You got to vibe with your tribe, you know, and yeah. the, and the, and the fear factory diehards are going to be so psyched to hear these songs live. It's been so many years. Um, yeah. You just want to make sure that you're connecting with them. What did, did you say to Dino? Like, Hey, can we do like a little hundred person club show first or, or are you diving right into the deep end? Like 2000 people with static X. Uh, no, we didn't talk about it, but I guess it was like, yeah, uh, diving deeper, you know, directly into the first show of the tour. So, uh, yeah. and the first show is the whiskey now, right? No, the first show is, it's the San Francisco, the Fillmore. Oh, right. And then the whiskey's in May, right? The whiskey's going to be, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not on the tour. It's like after the tour. It's like May May fifth. May fifth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that'll be like just to keep the keep the gears keep the gears greased. You'll be you'll yeah. be firing on all cylinders. Everything's got to be a machine pun from from here out on this episode. Like it's everything's got to be futuristic, sci-fi, machinery, gears, apparatus. Um, wow. Yeah. So, so San Fran is going to be your first show. Are, is your family going to fly over or are your parents going to fly over? Uh, they, they're, uh, actually organizing for coming in Chicago, actually the show in okay. Chicago and maybe the show after that. And, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin as well, because, uh, okay. my dad has been in LA because we have relatives over here, but he was like, okay, so I'm going to go to Chicago because maybe that that's the only part of America. You know, I haven't been yet. So, uh, yeah, probably they're going to be in Chicago. Oh, great. So you take him to get some deep dish pizza, Chicago dog, like with the tomatoes in it and the pickle and the celery salt. I think that's Dino yeah, knows. Man. Yeah, Dino told me, you know, you're going to get a lot of you know, fucking good Italian restaurants over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they got. Yeah, you'll get some good Italian food in Chicago for sure. Now, what did Dino now? Do you have a girlfriend back at home or a wife? No. Nope. Okay, so Dino told you he's like, listen, man, it's gonna be a lot of ladies trying to holler at you, holla, 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 right? Did, and did he tell you like, just play it cool? Or what? What did he? <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, what, of what you give me some it's a, some it's a bring a lot of condoms <laughs> <laughs> um so what, let let's talk about the first rehearsal did you and and do you warm up like what's your like, do you go in with a, a set of songs that you feel stronger about? Like, do you go in and you say, hey, these ones I'm really strong on and these ones I got to work on? Or how did you approach it? Well, right now we're just rehearsing the songs that, are, the, that we're going to do on this tour, plus uh, three or four more extra songs that we could throw in the, in the set list, uh, you know, occasionally. But yeah, I mean, of course, I do warm up. You know, I do like my 15 minutes routine of my stuff like that. <laughs> I, you know, my daily breathing exercises and stuff like that. My, then I go into my heavy vocals warm up, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. And then we, you know, we get straight to the set list. And uh, yeah, the first rehearsal were, you know, it was really, really good. You know, uh, and I, and how? how many days off do you take in between rehearsals? Like you're, so you're basically, it's like boot camp for tour where, where you're rehearsing every day. Yeah, basically. I think we had, I think we had no date off until, you know, today we had, you know, rehearsal pretty much every day. I mean, uh, since I got here, I, I had maybe four or five, you know, day offs. And then we, we started rehearsing every day up until today. So uh, it's pretty much tight, you know, but it, it feels good to be that type because you know it feels like a workout you know I need a workout in preparation you know yeah because when you first sat down if you sat down and you started talking and you were like oh hey what's up we'd be like everybody be worried we'd be like uh oh he's dino's working him in the ground like if you were like oh hey i'm excited <laughs> to be the new singer we'd be like oh no 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 we we but you know, your, your speaking voice sounds really good. It's, it's hard to do this. You know, I've done it. I've had to, I, not a full set, obviously of fear factory songs, but I've done four, three or four of them. And it's hard to go from the singing to the screaming, especially on like some of those. I, I can't even imagine the soul of a new machine stuff because that's, he sounds like Barney from Burton sounds like Barney on that. Like Maybe from that. napalm. Oh, I mean, it's, it's so fucking hard. Yeah, I mean, I never actually did like an entire Soul of the Machine set. I mean, I did the medley, but just, that was just 10 minutes, you know. I, I never actually tried to sing that album from start to finish, but it must, you know, it must be like really tough because the, the harsh vocals technique is really heavy. So when you go from that to clean vocals, you have to really have a good clean vocals technique, you know, to remove the strain for your vocal cords. And, uh, so yeah this, this tour i guess will be the first time you've done four or five shows in a row or had you done like a week of shows straight with your previous band yeah maybe not a week you know but like few days but you know i've i have been uh rehearsing myself you know alone in my studio last year just to to check my vocals you know how they would react to to uh sing like every day and i, and I did even more than what i'm supposed to do like i did like a couple hours of fear factory set every day for a month and i was actually feeling good you know because after two hours of sad you know you feel a little bit oh, okay and i need to take a rest but then you know if you if you take care of your vocals you don't shout in a club with your friends and stuff like that if you don't drink you don't smoke uh and take proper care of your vocals the next day you're gonna be just fine yeah and do you ever ever try arnica uh i know arnica but i i know it as a as a uh, muscle pain treatment you can take it um as like a pill in a, or in a in a lozenge form ann wilson from heart was on the podcast and told us about it and i've been using it and it's great it cool. just helps i think with uh inflammation so is there? Hey, wait, hey, you trying to get my guy into drugs already? Popping <laughs> pills? <laughs> what the hell? No, right. I was gonna say, hey, go to you know arnica.com. Use code Justin. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> um, what a what some Italian artists like we need to know more of, more from. And now you're gonna be like the hometown hero. Are you ready for that? Like, are you ready for <laughs> when you go back to Rome? You're like, oh my god, the guest list. The guest list 
you're gonna have oh hey it's your cousin i was yeah. gonna do like a, i was gonna do like a stereotypical italian um like you know milo hey it's, it's your cousin you know i was gonna do that whole thing <laughs> but like and you're like who's this where do i know you from oh from grade school you know or whatever yeah, yeah. Totally. Are, are you prepared for that? Because that's going to happen in October, right? You're going to play yeah. a hometown show with. Fibre. Yeah, we're going to play in Europe. We're going to play a bunch of uh, Italian gigs, but it's going to be North Italy. You know, since I'm from Rome, which is the center, you know, and rarely bands take care of the center and south of Italy, you know, because of a bunch of reasons. But, we used you know. to play. We used to go. We used to go play. Really? Yeah, we would play there. We always had decent shows there. I don't know why we stopped. We need to go back. There was a. There was a. There was a, a pretty decent scene there. Um, but obviously in the States, like we know, you know, the 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 raw power and lacuna coil, but like who are some Italian artists that we need to know about? Like now that you have this the 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 platform and the stage, are you gonna like lift up you know your fellow Italians? Well, uh, there are a lot of them, you know. Right now, one of the hottest bands from Rome, from my city, is Flesh God Apocalypse, you know. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're hard. Yeah, they're really, really, you know, hyper-technical and crazy. And uh, so uh, that's the first band that comes to my mind. Of course, Lacuna Coil, and they, they've been in the scene since forever. Uh, you know, but we have, a, you know, really a lot of great bands, really, you know, just, just can't count them, you know, so, uh, we, we have a metal fact, you know, like suburban scene is just that it's, it's not that popular in Italy, unfortunately, because Italy, you know, it, it's mostly about pop shit, you know, cheesy shit and trap and Italian trap music, which sucks, but, <laughs> you know, we, we have been trying to, to, you know, make uh, the metal scene a little bit more wider for years, but you know, it's still like a niche. So, uh, oh, a yeah. friend of mine was working with a uh, with an Italian artist who was going to play actually at Madison Square Garden. Wow. Um, and uh, I, I forget his name now. I know I follow him, Salmo. Oh, Salmo. Yeah, I know. I know that guy. It's like a, a rapper that yeah he he mostly you know but i used to like him in the in the old era you know it was more into like kind of crossover like rock rap kind of thing and also dubstep you know now it's a little bit more cheesy but you know it, it, it's a good it's a good very uh, popular right like yeah i guess i guess i mean we've had other artists who maybe um aren't singing or uh, having a lot of songs in English that have come over and done very well. Obviously, Rom Stein played in Madison Square Garden, but I was impressed with that, you know, because I hadn't heard of him before. And I and I thought, wow, it just goes to show like music can connect from any culture, from any country, from and it can connect worldwide. I mean, if you can go and sell out Madison Square Garden or at least get to play Madison Square Garden, I mean, that's incredible. Hey, everybody. Letting you know today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. You know them, you love them. And if you don't, you probably got a hairy dick and balls or, or snatch or whatever. Did I ever tell you about the story of uh, Alanis Nordic snatch? Negative. Well, there was a girl that um, a friend of ours was, was going to see uh, up in Canada. And for whatever reason, he nicknamed her. Uh, this is probably an inappropriate story for the for the ad read for manscaped but feel listen like fine with it <laughs> i feel like it's fine but but it could be wildly inappropriate um anyways sh let's just sh say she needed a little love from the manscaped uh trimmer collection and um but you know the the hippie thing it was in now it's out you got to keep it clean and mean down there you got to trim the pubes tr trim the groundhog you know we don't want another fucking what is it eight weeks of winter yeah it up. That, that's nonsense you can't you can't have can't have a fuzzy johnson no no you need it clean and mean don't have hairy balls go to manscape.com get the get the fucking performance package get the whole thing get the get the the lip balm and the fucking shampoo and the conditioner everything's great manscape.com promo code josta 20 percent off plus free shipping once again that's manscape.com use the promo code josta now back now back to the show I was wondering, like, you know, 
who are the most famous besides the obvious ones like Flesh God Apocalypse and um, Lacuna Coil. But I was wondering, like, are there mainstream artists that we just don't know about here? Um, like, you know, is there like an Italian Blink-182? Is there like an Italian Foo Fighters? Is there like, you know, I, I, normally um, we play festivals and you'll hear about the bands from there. Yeah. I mean, you, you just said Blink-182 just rang a bell because we have a band which is definitely the Italian Blink One Eighty Two. It's called uh, it was called Vanilla Eyes, I think. Um, it's called what? No, 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 no. Vanilla Eyes was the rapper. No, uh, <laughs> it was Vanilla something. Vanilla Eighty Six. <laughs> was but oh, I, I just can't remember it right now. It, it's Vanilla. Vanilla. vanilla you know what Vanilla Ice is doing right vanilla. now? You know what Vanilla Ice is doing right now? No. He's making houses and he has like a TV show. He. And he's making light like I was in a store where you buy like lumber and lawn mowers, like a big fucking we call a Home Depot here. I don't know what you, you have Home Depot in Italy. What's that? Home Depot or Lowe's. You have Lowe's in Italy. It's like a big place where you buy gardening and fucking wood and, oh, yeah, screws and tools. Of course. Of course we have those. Yeah. Vanilla yeah. Ice has his own lighting. He's got his own shit. Really? <laughs> yeah, vanilla ice lighting. So Dino might have like a vanilla ice ceiling fan up there. You might, you might, you might have. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was just a, uh, it was just a mistake in my mind. You know, it was just like a lapsus. You know, but <laughs> so no, what's, it's called what's the Italian. <laughs> the Italian band is called Vanilla Sky, and it's like a Blink One Eighty Two kind of band. You know, pop punk pop. Okay. Kind of band. And is there is there an Italian Metallica or an Italian Megadeth or an Italian uh, Slayer? Uh, well, I've heard the band. I don't I don't remember how they sound, you know. But I know they've been very popular. They're called Extrema. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And we've done some festivals with them for sure. Yeah, very popular. Yeah. And you know, I don't remember how they sound, but I think they are kind of you know like a thrash metal band so uh i think and i think they are from rome too if i'm not wrong okay how how often uh is dino playing guitar like how many hours per day and and how do you deal with it <laughs> how like he's strumming like yeah you know like always you know we're always <laughs> guitars laying around in the house you know both him and me you know picking up the guitar you know playing and, and you know for whatever reason it's it just it's just amazing you know it's just uh it's a world surrounded by guitars and music and metal music it's just you know amazing <laughs> and has he has he taken you to the rainbow yet yeah of course yeah, it's beautiful. how many times uh twice. twice yeah twice because we had the, the real party last day but you know last year for, for when i was here for the for the audition you know he took me there and uh, we eat some fine food and uh, even took a, a picture with a Lemmy statue. So, uh, yeah, that was, was really cool. And yeah, cool place. What did he uh, what did he suggest that you wear for the photo shoot? Was he like, don't wear the hate breed shirt? Don't wear, don't wear the, <laughs> he's like, what, what, he, what did he say? He's like, just wear no. some black leather. Like he's like, no leather pants. No. What, did, what were the rules for the photo shoot? No, I mean, uh, it wasn't mostly about rules. It was, it, it was like you know, just just wear just black stuff, you know, like black pants, you know, total black, you know, and that's it, you know, like you you can take these, you can take your necklace and stuff like that. But you know, we did a couple of shots with with my my hat. I had like a cargo, um, no, what what's it called, um, a camo hat, you know, and a couple of shots, you know, just with the hair like this, you know slip backward and you know, that's it total black is there, black. is there an italian word for redneck like is there a, and where are the rednecks in italy like the way that wear the camo like for <laughs> us we we have them in florida we love the florida we love florida is like the best we love it but is do you have like an what's the flora of italy ah uh, the florida you know florida of italy is like south italy of course you know <laughs> south italy is pretty much the redneck of italy <laughs> <laughs> I, and, love it. I can't wait to go back. 
Yeah, and even the center where, where, where I live, you know, Rome, it starts to get redneck a little bit. You know, like we talk, we talk, uh, you know, high volume, you know, ah, what did I come to the fun? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. We say uh, country boy, which is country man, which is campagnolo, which is campagna country. So that's how we call redneck, basically. Campagnolo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. So when you so when you're at Milwaukee Metal Fest and you see obituary, you gotta be like Campagnolo. Hey, you know, you, that, it's that'll be floor, great. Right? That would be <laughs> fucking great. Did um when now when you did this photo shoot, was it with Ross Halfin or no? Who who was the who was the photographer? Was it a famous photographer? Were you nervous? No, the, the um I mean no, I mean yes, the photo shoot was uh, Stephanie Cabral. Yeah, I think. Oh, I great. love Stephanie. Shout out to Stephanie. She that's my podcast picture. She did the po- the little podcast picture. Yeah, she's very, you know, very, you know, amazing, funny girl. Yeah, love to work with her, and you know, she's really, really good. You know, I was taking a look to the to the preview on her camera. I was like, fuck, this is amazing. And and she, she, Dino didn't try to make you go to like the L.A. River or like Skid Row to do the photos, right? He took you somewhere safe. Were you scared? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I mean, for, for for whatever reason, I was really feeling comfortable. You know, uh, we we just we just had a couple locations. We had one f- uh, photos uh, photo shoot studio, whatever you're gonna call it, and uh, and then the next location would be the the rehearsal space. You know, with all lights set up. You know, to make it look less like a rehearsal space, of course. And uh, you know, okay, just, so it's not outside. No, no, no train tracks. And Jackie, Jamie, the studio was one block from Skid Row downtown. Oh, he just didn't see. He just didn't see. You know, no. Tell him. Tell him about the crosswalk story. Tell him. <laughs> tell him. Okay, there's a oh, bunch of. On. First of all, we were late. We were late to the photo <laughs> shoot because it's just it's hilarious. He'll tell you why. Yeah. Okay. So he's a. There are a bunch of, of things Dino is gonna make me fun of. Make fun of me about. Fun of me about. <laughs> and one of these is, you know, I was I was waiting for the light. You know, I was waiting at the crosswalk, waiting for the light to go green. Now in Europe, at least in Italy, it's automatic, so you gotta wait just like a couple, you know, uh, twenty up to thirty seconds is gonna turn green. Okay, but here is like you have to push the button. And I didn't know about that. You know, <laughs> it, was written, it was over there. You know, but. I didn't even, you know, read it, you know. So uh, I was like, okay, let's wait. And I, I, I've been waiting like 10 minutes you know, in front of the fucking semaphore. It was like, you know, I was talking with my friends and I was like, how the fuck does it work here in America? You know, the, the light never fucking turned green. You know? <laughs> you know, how am I supposed to cross the, the fucking crosswalk? <laughs> and then, you know, Dino was driving by and I picked me up. and was like, wow, why did you take so long? And I, I was like, you know, I was waiting for the semaphore to fucking turn green, man. And he was like, oh, you have to push the button, Milo. I was like, how am I supposed to fucking know? You know, because in Italy, it's automatic. <laughs> right. I know. And then if and when you're driving, have you driven here yet? No. Uh, I still have to figure it out if, I can, if I'm uh, allowed to or not because I have, you know, my, my European license. License. I don't know if uh, it's gonna work here or not, but you know. I think you can. But when you when yeah. you some some of these lights, like I got lights by me. If you don't pull up far enough, it doesn't trigger it. Like if it's not a busy road, they don't want to stop the light on the busy road. So that drives me crazy when someone's like six feet behind where the the trigger of the light is, so that you can, you know, have the light go. Especially by me, where there's a bunch of train tracks and shit. But yeah, that's hilarious. So now you know. Don't be late, especially for the set time. <laughs> Yeah, you mean, you mean, and I mean, in Italy we have we do have buttons, but it's just to speed it up, you know. When there's there are no cars crossing, you know, and go like, okay, push the button to make it uh, go green faster. Uh, of course, I I could have done it, you know, here as well, but it just didn't see the button because not every semaphore has got a button in Italy, you know, just few of them at least. <laughs> so I was, it was like waiting eternally, you know. Yeah, it's just funny. It's gonna. Making fun of me about that for, for forever. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not gonna get you. He's not gonna let you live it down. So what? What else has been? Uh, what else has been a little bit of culture shock? Has there been anything else that you found uh, interesting or funny? A lot of culture shocks, man. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, or we, while 
we were eating at fast foods, you know, uh, you guys here have the, you just get a cup, you know, and just fill it with drinks, you know, no matter what. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some fast one. food's good. That's a good one, yeah. Dude. Yeah. Tell them that story. Tell them the story. <laughs> it's like telling the story. So, uh, you know, in Italy, we, you know, in fast foods like McDonald's, Burger King, whatever, we don't normally get it unless we have like some, I mean, I, I, I had some of these things. I, I have seen some of these things in a, in a huge mall. You know, I had, I had a Burger King inside of it. But I think you still had to pay for it. You know, like you pay for a Coke or whatever. Just you fill your cup, but you still have to pay for it. Here, just get a free cup and, you know, fill it with whatever. And so I was paying for a drink. And he was like, why did you pay for a drink? And I was like, you know, because am I supposed to? And I was like, no, just, just ask for a cup, man. It's so easy. You know, how could you think about it? I was like, because the needle is not like that. <laughs> The story, yeah. That's oh, the, the story. You're talking about the ice story? No, the one about we change the drinks. Oh, like I wanted to change the drink. Like I paid for a. What's, no, no, what's that? no. So I, I was hipping him to the to the thing. Hey, just ask for a cup of water, and you just put whatever drink you yeah. want, <laughs> right? And then and then he and then he buys a coke, right? He goes, oh, I want to buy a I want to buy a coke. And they give you a cup, right? So you can go to the fountain. You can pick whatever you want. So he buys the cup and he's standing there and he's like, uh, you know, you're supposed to put Coke in it. Yeah. <laughs> in front of the cashier saying, you know, where's my Coke? <laughs> kind of. He had that oh, look. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And then he's like, and like the drinks, the found drinks are over here. So he goes over there and he stands in front of it. And he's like, hmm. I noticed that he's thinking like, because he asked for a Coke, right? He goes, hey, do you think they'll charge me more if I want to get uh, the energy drink? <laughs> Like, bro, they're all there. Whatever you want to choose, that's what you get. And then he goes, and then he fills it up with Asahi, like the energy drink, whatever it is. Asahi fills it up. And then there's ice on the ice tray on the bottom. And he goes, hey, so how do you scoop up the ice? I'm like, no, don't scoop up that ice. You got to, like, put it underneath the ice thing so you can, ice will come out the top. And he puts it in there, and then... Of course, it's full. The um, his drink is the full. Cup was full. So yeah. the ice hit the thing and splashes. <laughs> yeah, ice <laughs> first. Dino, listen. Dino's a pro when it comes to ice. I had to, when we did the when we did the Jossa tour in Europe. I had to get an ice machine just for Dino. Just yeah, I had yeah. to have an ice machine on the bus, and he would yeah. always and we would pour the fresh water in. We had only fresh, oh, and also only glass bottle water, no plastics. We don't want any microplastics. We want yeah. clean, pure glass water bottle. And and then also, we don't do the sparkling like you guys do. A lot of the sparkling yeah, water. Still water, still water, no gas. Seen gas. Oh. Seen gas. Yeah, I don't like gas, seen water, so uh, that's perfect. Okay, so you're all right there. Yeah, definitely. Now, did you go? Now, did you go get the 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 killer authentic Mexican food? Was that the first thing? Like when you got of course, of course, that was the first thing. I mean, <laughs> burritos all over the way. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. I loved it. and did did he take it in and out burger? Not yet. Uh, nothing. Oh, not yet. Okay, no, it's just not yet. Oh, um, you gotta go to In and Out Burger. I almost wore my In and Out Burger shirt just for this show. Wow, let's tell, do it. Tell tell them about the spice. Like you know, you know, the spice is too hot for you. Like, I take you, I take you. I, hey, I take him to all these spots. I take him to all these spots to go eat. When you can't handle the spice, it's too much. No habanero. Yeah, all that's yeah. just too much. I'm a little bit of a pussy when when it comes to spice and stuff, man. Well, you know, yeah, hey, it. some of my, our producer's French too. He didn't like it either, but he kind of grew into it hanging out with me. And now he just now he eats it. He, he so built I, up a tolerance. It's going to happen to him. He's going to grow up, you know, he's eventually going to get used to it. Yeah. I mean, we have oh. some really hardcore spicy stuff in South Italy, but, you know, never gotten to it, you know, because I don't know, for whatever reason, I just can't handle it. You know, I well, feel like. I went to a, a Italian Christmas dinner this past uh, Christmas and it was a big deal. Like, you know, they do, I don't know, what is it? Like the seven fishes? What is the, there's some sort of tradition. I don't know if that's an Italian American thing or if it's Have you heard of this for the What do you guys do for the Christmas dinner? Uh well, we do a lot of things. It depends on on the region, it depends even on the city, you know. Each city in Italy has got its different cultures, food, you know, language, you know, it's it's really different, you know, like uh 
in Rome, uh, we I have to think about it. You know, I don't even remember. But we do a lot of things. We do like ravioli. We do uh, how do we do? We do like uh, little appetizers with you know. We do a bunch of things. I don't even remember There's a lot of them. So, so you don't do like the whole like lamb leg and all, and all the fishes lamb. and the muscles in the. Yeah, we do. We do lamb. We do lamb. Uh, but I think we do lamb mostly at Easter. Okay. You know? See, so, uh, so this, so I go to this dinner and they're making this pasta and then they're making this sauce, and I'm tasting the sauce and I'm because I was expecting like, oh, this is going to be the best seasoning and all this stuff. And I'm tasting the sauce, and I'm like, man, there's no seasoning in the sauce. It just tastes like tomatoes and crab or tomatoes and seafood or whatever. No salt, no seasoning, okay. no herbs, nothing. And I said uh, I said to the cook, who's who's a, Italian-American, I said, oh. you got any, like, seasoning? Like, you know, and I think he was offended. And I said, like, Italian seasoning, like, like oregano, basil, rosemary, thyme. I don't know. I was just naming off like whatever herbs I could think of. I don't even know if they're Italian herbs, but yeah. But um, he goes, I hate oregano, and I'm like, but I thought you're Italian American, or you're and his mother's from from Italy, or his yeah, his, or his, I think his mother's from Italy. Do you, do you like oregano, or was I wrong to think that? Or no, I you, like oregano. Right, like most Italians cook with oregano, no. Yeah, I mean, we put in a lot of recipes, actually, you know, and, and then um, actually the Neapolitan pizza, you know, typical Neapolitan pizza, we call it Napoli, which is the city, you know, we put a lot of, a lot of oregano in that. And, and fresh uh, basil and garlic. And I was like, what? I was like, what? where's the, and then I, I didn't want to be rude, but I'm thinking, man, how do you not like oregano? I, I don't know. Maybe I was. But yeah, it's really heretic. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no, listen, I, I wish you, I hey, wish you luck hey, on this tour. On. I Jamie, know you guys. On. Jamie, hold on. You know, we you know we do. You know, us Mexicans do for Christmas, right? Oh, you guys go hard in the paint. Tamales, bro. Tamales mm. with the good masa, with the real oh, good masa, like the real. Yeah. And then you know what they do? They the they, beef and the jalapeno and the potato inside and. The olive, they put an olive inside too. And then they hit the pinata Santa. They hit the Santa pinata. It's like it's like a whole pinata with Santa and they hit it. Pinata for every holiday, bro. Hell of a every holiday. And then all the Christmas candies come out and they fight. And they're like the Mexican, yeah. the Mexican candies, bro. They're fucking killer. The spicy ones. Mm. So that reminds me for Milwaukee Metal Fest for the Fear Factory meet and greet. It's a special pinata. We're gonna have a pinata. Of Bert and C. Bell, and we're gonna hit. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, <laughs> edit, edit that out. Edit that out. <laughs> yeah, you better cut that out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, um, but so for the but we are gonna have a pinata for the Fear Factory meet and greet. All right. And Man. it's gonna be it's gonna be. I don't know what we're gonna fill it with yet. Probably some some good candy, some Italian candy, some Mexican candy, and what is Mike Keller? Mike Keller is just a regular white dude. No, Mike Keller's Jewish. Jewish all right, so we'll have some Jewish candy, some Italian candy, and some um, you know, so we'll have like the little like chocolate gold coins, we'll have like the, the chocolate covered cherries, we'll have the fucking what's that one that you like, Dino? What's that candy? Saladito. That, Saladito. Saladito. Yes, <laughs> we'll fill the pinata with that, and that's gonna be part of the meet and greet. Is like you get to have a you get to be blindfolded and then Dino like directs you towards the pinata, but it's gotta be yeah. a metal. It's gotta yeah. be a metal pinata. I got a, I got a story for you. The Saladito factory. I called them up and they were like four miles from my house. And I went there. I talked to them on the phone for like an hour telling them how much I liked it, how much I grew up with it. Like, really? You need to come down here. And we'll give you a tour of the factory, how we make it. I'm like, I'm there. And they gave me like, 50 bags of them. I'm like, yes. Come on. I swear to God. I'm not lying. I called them up. I saw the number on back of the on back of the wrapper. I saw the number and I called them up. Dude, you gotta get sponsored by them. Can we get them sponsored by the Walking yeah. Metal Fest? Give me shit time. <laughs> that would be amazing. We gotta get we have to get them to sponsor Milwaukee Metal Fest. We have we have Pez by us. Did you ever have a Pez dispenser? In, do you ever see those in Italy? What's that? Pez? Pez. Shout out to Chaluda right there. Chaluda. There we go. 
Chaluda. That's good shit. Today's sponsor. Today's show is sponsored by <laughs> Chaluda. Use code Dino for ten percent off. Um, no, you you got to When you come to Connecticut, we'll take you to Pez. You go to the factory. Do you know you used to have the Pez? Like what you used to have the one like the Star Wars one or the, the fucking Scooby Doo one? You ever see those? Yes, I, I did see those, but I, I didn't have those when I was a kid. And you I open it up and it's like a little like sweet, like fruity candy. Yeah, yeah. My favorite one I had a He Man one. Yeah, the He Man Pez. That's that goes for like a hundred dollars on eBay now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Well, you guys got to go to rehearsal. Thank you so much for the time. Thank Milo, you, good luck. Have a great first show. Have a great tour. Tell Tony I said what's up. Tell tell Edsel. What up, Edsel? I got to get Edsel back on the show. Tell Tony and Edsel to come back on the podcast and tell who else is on the tour? Mushroom Head. Is J-Man with Mushroom Head still? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, you guys are going to have fun. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a lot of fun. It'll be a great tour. I'm going to fly out to one of the shows. I'll figure it out. Okay, well, yeah. Rob Flynn's coming out to the first show. That's going to be, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be very nervous for him. In San Fran. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's awesome. They're playing Milwaukee metal fest too. They're playing the Sunday. You guys are playing the Saturday. I know. I saw that. It's going to be cool though. And uh, th thank you for getting us on that, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for doing it. I can't wait. And I'm serious about the Fear Factory pinata meet and greet. It's going to be legendary. If you want, I'll bring the pinata on the plane. I'll carry it. You're gonna, you need an extra seat for that thing. By a, like John Five, buy the first class seat for the guitar on the way out. <laughs> to the so right now, the 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 two the 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 two guys who got the dream gig right now is John Five. He got into Motley Crue, and you got into Fear Factory. So you know, yeah. It's a good time. <laughs> Yeah, it's you know definitely a dream gig. You know, it's beyond dream gig, man. It's like something you could you could never imagine. You know, it's surreal. Well, it's nice chatting with you, and I and I hope you guys go out there and you crush it every night. I'm sure you will. And uh, come back and come back after the tour and uh, before Milwaukee Metal Fest, and I'll I'll have to berate you about what songs I want in the middle because the sets gotta be different. You're gonna have to rehearse because they're, they're gonna already see you in Milwaukee and probably Chicago. It's gonna, it's gonna be way different. We're gonna get into the we're gonna be able to get into the deeper cuts on at the metal fest. Oh, we're, you know I love me some deep cuts. You know we're gonna be doing you know we're gonna be doing the Soul of a New Machine tracks. Um, of course we'll do no one for you because you want Thank that you. one. Yeah. Yeah. No one. No. Yeah. One. Can I can't even hit that note. No one. <laughs> Yeah, Fuck good. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jamie. Later, Jamie. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Dean. I love you, brother. Thank you, Milo. You Later, Later, yes, man. Later. Rock it. Thanks, Brian. Quick outro, letting you know that we appreciate your support and thank you for um for checking out today's show with Milo and Dino from Fear Factory. Go see them on the road with Static X, Mushroom Head, Dope, and many other bands. You can find the dates at Static X's website. And uh, you can also see them at Milwaukee Metal Fest 2023. That's they're awesome. They're going to be doing a dude. They they better do different songs, right? We got to hold them to that. <laughs> what, like it's got to. We got to hold them to that. They can't. They can't do the same set as set, Static X, right? Ah, oh, I would imagine. I would imagine they'll change it up. You know. I hope so. They they sounded like they were into it. Go to Static dot X or Static dash X dot org. How the fuck say that? Can you say that? Can you repeat that? Static dash dash dot org. So uh, I couldn't do that fast in a bunch of times. No. And then for the Fear Factory site, let's see. It is uh fear fearfactory.com. You'll see all the dates. And if you want to meet them with their new singer Milo, oh wow, look at that new photo, that nice new photo on fearfactory.com. Uh, you can go to martyrstore.net. There's only 20 meet and greets for May 27th. They will be at uh, at Milwaukee Metal Fest. Get your tickets, single day passes, two day passes, three day passes, or maybe you want to go on a payment plan. We can do that too. Go to therave.com slash metal fest for tickets. The link will be in the show notes. Therave.com slash metal fest. And remember, uh, martyrstore.net for meet and greets, Ripper vinyl, Corpse Grinder vinyl, Josta vinyl, but there's only like six, seven copies left of the Josta, so get them while they're hot. And, um, yeah, we will, we will be back with another episode. We got, we got, uh, 
we got periphery coming on right we had um that's in uh guy? that's in two weeks that's mark right we had mark on yeah. um we got a bunch of sh we got the how awesome is this coming out yep and then we also have uh oh, we got something else in the can as well if i'm not mistaken let's go we got we got uh, some surprises but anyways if you're subscribed yeah. to our gas digital network.com um you can download all the episodes and you can hear the new how awesome is this and you can hear a bonus episode with jack Koshik, another episode with him uh that's not going to be going out to the public uh, it's more for us to just archive and get some information for when we eventually do the um milwaukee metal fest documentary but if you're watching on youtube like subscribe hit the bell that all really really helps we appreciate everybody checking out the sid wilson and ross robinson episode the glenn benton episode kicked ass the trevor phipps from on earth episode and uh thanks again to century media go to centurymedia.store to get yourself that new sanguasuga bog of course gotta thank indiemerchstore.com use the promo code josta10 and they will be set up as a vendor at uh milwaukee metal fest but until then you can shop online and save 10 percent when you use the code josta10 indiemerchstore dot com all right everybody drink your coffee do your push-ups listen to fucking sanguasuga bog and hit that like button leave us a five-star review on itunes or whatever else you got to do and spread the word about the uh podcast coming back hard all right we'll be back bye-bye produced by brian mckay executive producers jake olszewski ben lee aj lewis garrett keeping dan smith nick torito jj hernandez Joe Bartovic, Jason Jarvis, Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato, Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Ryan Undercoffler, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bolin, Ryan St. Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Monson, Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler, Mike Horgan, Emma Horgan, Arna Rock, Patrick King, Oscar Brummett, Stacy Steinecke, Fernando Somoza, Patrick O'Brien, Dominique Zimmer, Ryan Sanders, Lara Snyder, Daniel Burt, Milwaukee Metal Sausage, Adam Boss.